Today we're building this red panda exhibit complete with a main exhibit for guest viewing and a small back holding area. And of course, this build is all completely built on the brand new Planet Zoo console edition. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Savannah and in today's video, as you just saw, we are creating a red panda exhibit that is taiga themed. And of course, we are making the entire thing on Planet Zoo console edition, which just released uh, about a week ago or so when I'm recording this. And I have loved diving in and trying to create different exhibits on console. This build specifically was built on PS5. And before we get too far into this, I do want to thank Frontier, of course, for sponsoring today's video and making this content possible. Now, the most fun or most interesting part of making this exhibit for me was the fact that on Planet Zoo Console Edition right now, it will be in the future, but it's not currently, all of the DLC packs are not available. And so for somebody like myself that's played Planet Zoo since launch, and I've gone through and got all the DLC packs, all the additional pieces and the animals, all the different themes and things that we've gotten over the last few years of the development of Planet Zoo on PC, I've grown really accustomed and used to using some uh, pieces. Like I use them in every single build, they've become staples for me. And so in creating this exhibit that you're seeing right here, it was almost like being brought back to like a base game challenge version of the build. Many of the pieces that I would normally gravitate towards, like for example, when I build something that is structured out of wood beams, my go-to two beams are the twilight beams from the twilight pack. I absolutely love the kind of irregular, unfinished, that kind of look that those beams have. So when I was looking for something in Planet Zoo console to kind of replace and use in place of those beams, I actually came across, I, I believe they're like the East Asia or the Asian style beams. Now they're not recolorable like the Twilight ones are, but for this build, they were absolutely perfect in the color that they were in already. And it was really easy to use them. They are a little bit bigger than the uh, Twilight beams, but they have sort of the same kind of unfinished, irregular shape to them. And so it was really a lot of fun for me and, and a challenge, like I mentioned, to find replacement for pieces that I use all the time or just use brand new pieces like these logs that I end up not using, but I completely forgot that they existed in the game and they would be perfect for this style build. I just went with something that was a little bit more like squared off, especially because I wanted the building to match kind of the back holding area of this exhibit. And that brings me to kind of the overall layout of this exhibit is actually three different parts. So what we're working on here is going to be kind of like the support area for the staff. They likely would have maybe a little break room, maybe a kitchen or some food storage, maybe a couple computers in there, um, some carriers, things like that, that they would use for the daily husbandry and the care of the red pandas. Maybe it's the main place they operate out of, or maybe it's just a small support area and they have a main area somewhere else in whatever zoo that this exhibit's going to exist in. So I do add some doors and some windows just to make it look, you know, like an actual usable function functional building, as well as like this trim all around to tie it in with the next part of the exhibit that we work on, which is actually going to be the back holding area or separate holding space for the red pandas. If you are housing almost anything in a zoo, it is very beneficial and very useful to have a separate enclosure that's either out of view of guests or in view of guests, depending on the facility, but somewhere to separate out animals if you need it, whether that is quarantining new animals that have just arrived at the zoo, quarantining out injured or ill animals, 
um, separating moms and their babies if that's what they need. Now, I will preface this by saying I really am not familiar with red panda husbandry almost at all, um, but I'm just talking in generalities here. Like it is a good and, and useful thing to have a separate holding space for many reasons for many types of animals. So I'm just envisioning that that's kind of what this back holding area would be used for. It's very small. It's very like almost kind of like utilitarian. It's just square. It has like the bare essentials that the pandas would need. In my case, I do actually bring over the path and allow this to be viewable to guests, but back holding spaces don't always have to be. In fact, as a keeper myself, it is much nicer to have some viewing areas that are out of the view of guests because sometimes the reality of caring for animals isn't always that glamorous or you have animals that have specific needs for a short amount of times that are going to be stressed out by being viewed by guests. They need a quiet area to kind of relax and recuperate from certain things. So for example, in this exhibit, you know, maybe that space uh, is inside or maybe this facility has one of those spaces that's secluded from guests on the other side of the park and any red panda that needs to go there would be crated and transported to that facility. Um, it really just depends facility to facility. But since I am making this build is kind of what I refer to as like a, a one-off build, it's not really built into a park. I'm just building this one exhibit and that's it. Um, I have to kind of just envision or imagine that some of these resources are available within the park that this exhibit would exist in. So I'm using the wood pieces to frame out this entire exhibit. And then at the very end, I do go back and toggle off the climbability for all these pieces. That's a really useful tool to use, especially when you're dealing with animals, or I guess when you're dealing with animals that can climb so that your animals don't try to climb out or around the framing of your exhibit. So I do turn off the climbability for all of these little pieces. And that way, when there's a red panda in there, it will stay within the exhibit and only climb the small little climbing frame that I put in there. But as I believe I mentioned, it really only gets a small climbing frame, a food tray, a water dish, you know, things like that, because it's really not meant to be like a long term holding space for a panda. It's meant to have uh, or just be used as a temporary holding space for whatever the needs might be. For getting inspiration for this build, I actually utilized some screenshots from a previous project that you may be familiar with if you have watched my channel for a while. It was a collaborative project that I created with a few other Planet Zoo creators, and that would be Pine Mountain Sanctuary. That was a very like woodlands, forested, taiga inspired build. And I used a lot from that, uh, that project. And what made that fun for me or what made me decide to do that is I really wanted to see how well I could kind of replicate some of the key things that I do in Planet Zoo PC if I could recreate those on console. And so this exhibit is a demonstration of that as well as the last console video that I released. And if you haven't checked that out, we built a spotted hyena exhibit that was meant to replicate very closely an exhibit that I had built on PC about two years ago. So after you're done watching this video, I do recommend heading on over there because it is also a really good comparison of Planet Zoo console and Planet Zoo PC and just how detailed you can get with the console version of Planet Zoo. But going on here, I utilized some of the inspiration as far as like the guest fencing, the building style type, the back wall fencing, and even kind of like the tree and foliage palette for this exhibit. Now, I did also want to get in a little bit more and deal with the terrain tools in this exhibit. So this is going to be kind of my first attempt at utilizing the terrain, uh, terrain paints and terrain um, elevation and things like that. I really wanted to create this like dry moat that the guests kind of view over, which hopefully is not 
that much of a focus of the exhibit and they feel like the pandas are right there with them on their eye level. Um, it's an open air exhibit, so it's not completely fenced in, but this dry mo is meant to keep the pandas in the exhibit, keep them from jumping out or climbing out. So I'm again using those same stone pieces that I used on the back holding area to create kind of this curved wall. Now, in real life, this exhibit would very likely have something like hot wire around the interior of this. I didn't add that because I really didn't feel that it was necessary. And actually with the red pandas in the game, when I place them in there, they aren't actually able to escape. So as far as this build goes from a gameplay standpoint, it could absolutely be used in one of your zoos and the pandas would utilize the exhibit as intended and not be able to escape. But I utilize this kind of curved wall to make the entire perimeter of the exhibit. It has a secondary fence for the guests because we all know, you know, the public is unpredictable and at times they don't listen to directions and given the opportunity would maybe try to get a little too close to some zoo animals. So this exhibit offers double fencing to make sure that the guests stay within a healthy and safe distance from accidentally falling into the exhibit. So this main stone wall is the interior fence. And then I do like a little decorative exterior fence with some plants in between. That also helps me bring some of the foliage, some of the landscaping from inside the exhibit. It brings it outside of the exhibit and almost kind of includes the guests a little bit more within like the style of the exhibit, almost like they are in the same environment as the red panda. Now that's really easy to do in this kind of one-off project because there's not a lot of surrounding buildings, surrounding exhibits, animals from other biomes around this. And I am specifically building on the taiga biome map but if this was in uh, a zoo, like a bigger project where I am making other exhibits or other buildings and things like that, bringing out the foliage from inside the exhibit into the guest area can create uh, a little bit more immersion for your guests and make them feel like, again, that they are part of uh, the environment that those pandas are living in. Theming is huge and very important because it, it adds to that guest experience. So I do try my very best to utilize a lot of the kind of taiga foliage and landscaping. Um, they're actually plants that I don't use all that often. So again, it was a lot of fun to go through and almost kind of limit myself to what I could and could not place down because it was challenging. And again, for somebody like me who's built in Planet Zoo for so, so long, I mean, I have over a thousand hours in the PC version it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to challenge myself and use new foliage and things like that. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. One question that I've received about Planet Zoo Console Edition is actually uh, difficulty in building and like how long these builds have taken me. And to answer that, they actually take me kind of sort of a similar time as they might in Planet Zoo PC. This exhibit was only about like two hours and 45 minutes all in total. Now I didn't actually build it sitting down in one sitting, but in total, when I inputted the footage into Premiere to start editing and before I sped it up, it was about two hours and 45 minutes, which is actually fairly average for what I might spend on an exhibit in a PC console. Now, when I first started, I'm sorry, PC, uh, Planet Zoo on PC, <laughs> PC console doesn't make any sense, but Planet Zoo on PC, that's about an average time that would, it would take me to build an exhibit. Uh, when I first started building on console though, I was much slower. So like anything else, it absolutely does take just a little bit of practice and patience to get good at it. But this was my second uh, exhibit that I built in the game. And so by this time, after spending already about five hours in the game in total, a couple hours practicing and creating a tutorial, a couple more hours creating the first build that's already on the channel, and then a couple more hours into this exhibit, I'm starting to really get the hang of it and the controls are coming very naturally. My fingers know what to do and it's really uh, much quicker than my first exhibit came together. So two and a half hours is pretty darn good for an exhibit, at least for an exhibit that's standalone, that doesn't have a lot of surrounding spaces and things like that. Um, so putting in the uh, barrier here, you'll see that I utilized 
the corrugated metal barrier in the back, and then the null barrier in the front. Utilizing the corrugated barrier in the back is actually something that I used to do a lot in my builds and I don't do as frequently anymore because I've kind of created a habit of just using build pieces and kind of forgetting about the in-game barriers. However, in Planet Zoo console, I was missing some of the corrugated metal pieces that came in some of the DLCs for PC. So it reminded me of this little trick that I used to utilize all the time, and that is kind of just decorating on top of an in-game barrier. So as you can see here, I've taken the metal barrier in the back, and I've added some, in this case specifically, the climbable pieces from the habitat tab, and I'm using them to kind of like decorate and add some extra detail to the back of this barrier, which just gives, again, a little more detail, a little bit more variety, and makes it look a little, little fancier, a little more themed, right? So I'm really excited with how this turned out. It was something that I took directly from Pine Mountain Sanctuary and brought it kind of over to this park to recreate. All of the fences really were kind of taken almost directly from Pine Mountain Sanctuary and recreated in this game, uh, in this build, because I really liked the style and the fences and stuff that I had created over there. Now we're moving on to my very favorite part of any build. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I never really like what I'm building until I add trees, bushes, all the plants, all the greenery. So if you're feeling a little bit unsure about your build, I encourage you not to give up and just go ahead and start adding some of the landscaping, some of the trees. It really starts at that point to bring it together for me. It really starts to kind of complete the feel and the layout and the style of a build when I start adding the greenery. Um, and like I said, I really don't like what I have built in, until I start adding that. And for this build in specific, because it is a taiga biome, I really wanted to bring that back exterior foliage foliage, excuse me, up to the back of the fence and create this nice little backdrop. It is one of the tips that I give people. Oh, my controller died. I apologize. I had to connect it and uh, make sure that it was uh, connected to my PS5. I played for so long and forgot to charge it overnight. But anyway, one of the tips that I have for people when they're starting out is to give their exhibits a backdrop. It's really daunting to look at a blank new map that has nothing in it, just for miles and miles, it's totally blank. And when you do build something, if the backdrop is again, that kind of boring and blank, it can make your exhibit look a little bit incomplete or unfinished. And so just by adding uh, background trees or maybe a building in the background or something that makes it feel like it's not just built in this empty void, really can go a long way with adding those little finishing details on your exhibit. So that's exactly what I did here with all the backdrop of the trees. I also helped myself out by raising the backdrop, making a back wall with all that rock work that then ties in with this rock work that I'm putting down here in the front of the exhibit to kind of create this almost like retaining wall. Another thing that I'm doing in this exhibit that I've done with a lot of my builds is I'm mixing rocks together from two different biome sets. This one specifically, I'm mixing the temperate and the taiga rocks because they have a slightly different color tone to each of them. And that allows me to create a lot of detail when it comes to the rock work, because if you were to look at any rocks out in nature, at a zoo, at basically anywhere. Just go outside and look at some rocks. They're not all the same color. They do have slight variance to them, especially in something like if there's faux rocks and they're built into uh, a zoo exhibit, some of them might get more wear and tear because they're cleaned more often if that's where an animal goes to the bathroom all the time or things get sun bleached or you know just wear and tear from being outside is going to discolor almost anything that you build and exhibit out of so creating very slight color differences either with flexi colored objects or in this case two different style of rocks that are slightly different in color tone it really can give a lot of variation and a little bit more detail to your exhibit. 
So that's what I did here, and it's what I do in all of my Planet Zoo console edition builds, as well as my PC builds. When I'm using those faux aquatic rocks, I will change their color to something slightly different uh, for each and every rock. Now for this exhibit, we are moving it towards uh, enrichment and little finishing details. I wanted to make sure our red pandas had some things to play with. Um, they obviously have this really big climbing structure. I used some of the prefab uh, blueprints that are already in the game, but they do have all the pieces you can make your own and style it however you'd like. I do end up adding as well this little like feeding. It's the arboreal feeding tray. I kind of add that sticking out as like a little platform and it's a really cool little area where the pandas go up onto there to eat and they're kind of, they're closer to the guests. So it's a little bit of like an experience. So I would imagine that maybe the park would put that on a, like a timing schedule where they say like every day at 10 a.m. the pandas get some food or every day at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. whenever their feeding schedule is. And that way guests can come over and they can get a really close look at the pandas uh, feeding. So I added that as kind of like a little feature to bring attention to some of the pandas behavior. That's one of my favorite things when I'm visiting zoos is when I get to see the animals utilize a, a natural behavior, whether it's eating or playing with something or digging or climbing or whatever it might be. Now, sometimes you do go to a zoo and the animals are being super lazy and they're just napping. That's a behavior too, still interesting, but even more interesting is them playing with stuff um, or eating or something like that. Now on the inside of both exhibits, I actually add a climbing, uh, pole to one of these closed African windows as a way to hint at that would be a way for the panda to get into that support area. So on the inside of this building, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's probably like a cage within this uh, building that the pandas can come inside to if the keepers need them. Um, so on both sides, I do that. I, I use that little window as kind of a, a simulated guillotine door that could be opened and closed to allow the pandas in and out of the back support area. And this bill, believe it or not, is actually almost complete. I did jump around just a little bit, which is something I do tend to do when I'm building uh, either on console or PC, because I just kind of can't focus on one thing at a time. I'll build uh, a little while in one section and then I'll move on to something else just to kind of make sure that my vision is coming together appropriately and how I want it to. But we're putting some final details on here. I think the only last thing that I have to do is all of this landscaping around the front, which again, I'm using a lot of flowering bushes that I, I really can't remember the last time I used them. So that was a lot of fun to incorporate those. So a little bit of last landscaping, I think a couple more rocks to kind of finish off. We do put some landscaping in front of the back holding area as well, the other separate exhibit. And this whole thing really does come together quite well. I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. So as we finish up this build, put those last final details on and we'll get to some shots of just the exhibit and the red pandas utilizing the exhibit so that you can see them move around and use the climbing structure and all that kind of stuff because it's the best thing to see your animals actually use what you've created. I wanna hear from you down in the comment section below. Let me know if you have Planet Zoo on console and how you've been enjoying it and what you've built. Um, I haven't really been able to hear from the community as of yet because the game is so new, but what I have heard, everybody is very much enjoying it. So I wanna know what you've built and what you like about it and uh, your experience overall. And hopefully these videos can provide you just a little bit of inspiration. I know watching other creators build inspires me to build as well. So that's what I really hope that this video does, as well as give you a few little tips and tricks to build more effectively or more realistic exhibits, whatever the case may be. And of course, thank you again to Frontier for sponsoring today's video. I will have one more Planet Zoo console build coming out very, very soon. So do make sure that you hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment, as I mentioned on this video, so you don't miss out on any future content, uh, whether it be Planet Zoo console or Planet Zoo on PC. 
We'll get to those end cinematics here in just a second as we finish up this back holding area. But I really do appreciate you being here. I really do hope that you've enjoyed. Any questions, comments, or feedback, I would absolutely love to hear from you. But until next time, I will talk at you in the next video. Bye.